It's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got another classic we're going to redo today. We're going to learn how to do Thunderstruck by ACDC. So I did this originally over 10 years ago. Um, that video has millions and millions of views on it now. Uh, but we're going to redo it. And so we're redoing some of our classics here. Just kind of bring them up to date a little bit. Both with kind of camera quality, production quality, teaching quality, you know, all that good stuff. Um, now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Ring that notification bell so you know when we release a new video. Uh, so you can like and comment on the videos. That really helps with the whole YouTube algorithm thing. And um, if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, really the best way to do it is to click the link in the description below. That is a link to my Guitar Academy. My online Guitar Academy contains all my guitar courses. Uh, for like covering everything from complete beginner courses to more advanced courses in technique, improvisation, ear training, and theory. Um, the, you get a free seven day trial to the academy, get full access to the entire academy. I go live every Saturday just with academy members, like kind of a live video stream, and you get personalized support from me as well. So please click that link and go check it out. All right, so let's get into the track. So we are in standard tuning here, just like on the original recording. Uh, if you follow along with some of the live recordings, sometimes I'll tune down a half step, so don't do that. This is to, for following the standard uh, tuning that they used on the original recording here. Um, and we have to talk about the, the big elephant in the room here uh, when it comes to how this intro is played. Um, now, the previous video that I have that has millions of views on it, uh, when I was picking it, there's a lot of people that are just, you know, in the, in the com would always comment over the years saying that, you know, he actually played this legato. Um, and they're getting this because of the, um, the official video, he's just doing that. And he's got his hand up in the air, big rock star pose, and he'll occasionally do that a little bit live too. But, uh, for the most part, live and on the original recording, he's alternate picking this. It makes it much more difficult to play, to alternate pick it, but it's you can't really make it sound like the recording unless you are alternate picking it and not playing it as straight legato. It's a lot easier just to play it as just hammer-ons and pull-offs. Um, you don't have to time anything between the hands. Um, so a lot of people like to play it like that, and it doesn't sound bad, it just doesn't sound like the record. So we're gonna play it like the record, and we're gonna be picking every single one of these notes in the intro. So. A lot of documented evidence since the video that I posted on it. A lot of people kind of come around and agree with me that it's all been picked, even Angus himself. So it's picked. So let's do it. So let's jump into this intro here. Now we'll give you a couple of uh, tips on, on getting this intro up to speed. Even Angus himself said it started as a legato type exercise. It started as a legato exercise. Like a lick. So he would play it just all hammers on pulls off pull offs. Um, so that's how it started. But then he started picking the notes because um, it gave it that little bit more of an edge, and he enjoyed, liked that sound more. But uh, a little tip here: if you're trying to do this, still be doing the legato with your fret hand. So you still, I'm still feeling like I'm pulling off the notes. Instead of just trying to, trying to make it just like a, just a single, like that. Because when you time it with the pick, it can kind of sound choppy. If you're doing it like that, but if you're doing the, the pull-offs and but you're just picking the notes as long with it. Yeah. 
So like I said, I'm playing, I'm pulling off, but just when I pull off, I'm gonna pick the open B string with it. So I'm picking each note, but I'm still feeling like I'm doing a legato, basically. And what that's gonna do is just kind of give it, you still get that edge that you're getting with the body of the alternate picking, but it smooths it out a little bit as well. So, and it actually makes it easier to time as well. So, so how, what is the pattern itself? We're gonna start here just by doing four to the open string on the B string. This is all on the B string. Four, zero, seven, zero. Now, before you actually do that, you're gonna hit the open B string once. So you're gonna hit the open B string with an upstroke. And now we're gonna start the pattern on this four to the downstroke, then an upstroke on the open B, and then seven, and then an upstroke on the open B. So, so it just kind of starts that little, little quick little upstroke is just kind of an anomaly. It just does it to start it. But then you can find the pattern from there, which is just playing down, up, down, up. It's a four note pattern. So that four note pattern is played at four and seven for eight times. So like I said, try to do a pull up. So you can see how, you can actually see Angus, how his fingers are moving when he's doing this lick. And you can tell he's actually doing, still doing pull-offs. It's still a legato exercise to him. He's just picking along with it. Um, so we have that opening upstroke on the B and then. So after eight times there. And then we're gonna jump up here to the, move everything up one fret. And now it's going to be five, zero, eight, zero. And you're going to do that eight times. And then go back down to the four and seven, eight times. And then five and eight, eight times. Now we're going to start jumping around a little bit. So this last one, you go with that eight to the open B string there, that when you hit that open B, that last open B, you need to shift up to the 12th fret. Um, and then we have a series of notes that kind of descends down. And we have. So that's gonna be 12. Remember, you're hitting the open B string, or in your hand, you feel like you're pulling off, but you're just picking along with it. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then back down to the ninth fret. So we have this 12, 10, sorry, 12, 10, 9, 10, 9, 7, shift down to the 7th fret, 7, 9, then shift down to the 5th fret, 5, so. And then we're down to four, five. And just kind of repeat that. So So that's that second half of the intro there after the four, seven and five, eight section. He repeats that a lot throughout a, a, a good portion of the song and the verse sections and stuff. So it's just that repeated. Obviously when he plays live, he goes and he plays some rhythm guitar work instead. Um, and I can say that really all the way up into really the pre-chorus of the song, 
The intro, the, the feel of the intro after the very initial beginning is really kind of carried by Malcolm. So Malcolm is doing this, um, this little rhythm that's just very, very cool. And let me just roll off a little bit because he doesn't have much, very much gain on. <laughs> So he's kind of holding this with his pinky. You can do do whatever, but um, what it is, you're just gonna hold the fifth, second fret on the A, fourth on the D, and the G, and um, he's basically hitting these double stops here at the fourth fret there on the D and the G together. So you do a quick little down up on those, and then back to hit the. Um, the A string by its, uh, the, uh, the, you know, you're holding it the second fret just by itself. So it's, it's better to kind of just feel this rhythm than try to like, you know, down, up, 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 down, down. It'll kind of fall into place, but you can see there's a couple of upstrokes in there. So we have like down. So all the notes there that I'm hitting on the a string uh, are with a downstroke. So that's going to be a quick down up, uh, then a down, then up, up, then down. Now I'm calling out the hits that are happening on the double stops there. But I Every, after every one of those hits, I'm going back to the A string and just hitting that downstroke there. Down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up. So I'm playing it like that because when you get it up to tempo, Uh, that's kind of the way you're going to be able to do it and actually make it sound like it because it, it goes pretty quick. It's a tricky little rhythm. And he keeps that going through a lot of the intro there, all the way up to the pre chorus. And then Angus kicks into this riff at oh, 1 minute and 34 second mark. I'm following the, the time indications do are going to be on the official video um, on YouTube there, which has over a billion views, if you know it. Um, so um, this is at the 1 minute and 34 second mark. Um, You'll see live, Angus comes and plays this while Malcolm continues that riff we just did. It's way this. So that's going to start with this B power chord for the second fret of the A string. And then a quick open A power chord. So I'd open A string with a second fret on the D and the G. And then over to the E power chord. Now when they do the E power chord, both him and Malcolm generally play it kind of like an E major, but they just hit the low E, the bottom three strings really. So it's kind of shift over like that. Instead of going like that. So kind of cleans it up, I think. So that quick little move. And then back to the A twice. And then back to the E. And here at that last E, he just kind of rolls that off and lets that fade out, die out. And then we come back into the the next verse, which Angus is pretty much just going to be playing a, a B power chord while Malcolm continues that little riff. And then just every once in a while, like the beginning of each verse line, I'll hit that again just to kind of keep it going. So they're slowly building the dynamics, but that's pretty much what's going on. Obviously, a lot of these things, there's three things going on. There's that main lick that's continuing to go, and there's two main rhythm parts. When that kind of thing happens, generally Malcolm, at least live, goes and plays one of the rhythm parts. All right? Plus, you know, playing that rick lick, the entire thing would completely, probably his, his hand would break off. All right, so after that uh, verse, we get to the pre-chorus, and then um, both Angus and Malcolm come in and play the same thing together 
looks like this. All right, so pretty simple now. B power chord, then the A power chord, then the E. Now from there, we go, we go to like a four note, four chord version of this, which is the same exact thing again, except you're gonna start it with an A, A power chord. So that first time I play in the riff, they just don't, they leave out that first A power chord. So we have this. And then from there, we're gonna start it with an A. And just keep repeating. All right, and then we get to the chorus, and they're both playing the same thing together as well here. We have this. So, straight ACDC here. Um, so quick chord changes though. We're gonna start here with this B power chord. And then we can play it like this, more comfortable. B, then to the A. And then right here, you're gonna see, uh, I think a, a lot of people get this wrong here. It's a D power, quick D power chord. So it goes. So just quick D power chord. So you don't have to hit the high E string. It's just the open D. You can have the open A string in there. And the, it's the second fret on the G, third fret on the B. Then jump to that E chord again. So it is. So this is, if you slow down recording, that's a very quick chord change. It happens in there on the, if you slow it down a little bit. Plus you can see them, this is how they do it live as well too. So it, so when you get to that E chord, go back to the A, and then back to E. And that's the chorus riff. And then for this first chorus, just end it with a B power chord hit a couple times. Now we have, uh, I guess we'll call this the bridge. Quick little riff here, it looks like this. Uh, so that's just kind of doing four, two on the D string. Kind of Malcolm plays it like four, then he jumps back and grabs the two. Here you can just do it like that if you want. And then into a B power. All right, so he just does that a couple of times and we get to the solo. Now, before I play Angus' solo, we're gonna check out the rhythm, uh, what Malcolm's doing underneath it here. So let me play the uh, rhythm for the solo first. So here we go. So it's just kind of um, E power chord to the B power chord. And here it's the E power chord back down to the E power chord up to an F sharp power chord. So that's the second fret on the low E and fourth fret there on the A. So we have this. Now here, this next chord is basically just, it's a kind of a transition chord. And what he's doing is he's hitting the open E and the open A string together. So we have this. So then we go back to the A power chord and then back to the E power chord. So we have this. All right, 
So now let me get to Angus's solo real quick, um, and then I'll show you how to play it uh, note for note. So here we go. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna start with some um, double stops here on the G and the B string together. So we have this. So you play the ninth fret on the G and the B. You can slightly bend them up. Then resolve it over here to the ninth fret there on the D string. Then quickly come down here to the nine seven on the A string. Over to seven on the D. And then back to those two double stops. So we have this. And then we're gonna get into our first little blues loop. So that's gonna be a bend of the ninth fret there on the G string. And then he's gonna take the same note but play it here at the seventh fret there on the B string. So it's kind of a slow bend on that ninth fret on the G. And once it gets the pitch, now you're gonna play the same pitch here, but at the seventh fret there on the B string. And then you're gonna play seven on the high E string. Then pull off se 10 to seven on the B. Over to nine on the G. Then back to that seventh fret there on the B string. And then when you, you're gonna roll over to the seventh fret there on the G, but when you play that note, you're gonna slightly bend it up to almost like a half step. And resolve that down to the ninth fret there on the uh, D string. So with this. This next section um, really kind of gets buried in the mix a little bit, what he's doing here. Um, and I couldn't find any like straight isolated guitar tracks of the original recording. There's like isolated live tracks. and But um, so I couldn't really find that here. And then when you, you see him play it live, he's usually staying up in the seventh position. But from what I can pick up on the recording, um, it's not, it doesn't really make a lot of sense when he's, when he's plays it live, it doesn't quite sound like it's on the recording. Um, and it doesn't make sense, like how, how it's fingered to play all of it here in the seventh position. Um, so what I think is more going on here is after we got, it sounds like he changes, he does a bend here in this E again, but he changes it to the B string. You can also hear the tone of the string has changed too. It's not, it's, it's a little bit brighter. Um, so that generally means he's moved to a higher string and bending the same note. So from there though, we have this. Now, that part right there is, is really kind of jumbled on the recording. So, so I'm just like super slowing it down and trying to pick up any kind of uh, note that's even being halfway played in there, and that's what I'm kind of putting together for uh, for you here. So we have this bend at the fifth fret, release that bend, pull off to the fifth fret, and then pick the fifth fret again, and then pull back off to three. And then we're gonna come up here, and we're gonna play, you're gonna play seven, Pull off to five, pull off to the open B. Then kind of the same lick, except the top note is at the eighth fret. Eight, pull off to five, pull off to the open B. So I just... And then right here, right after that, you hear this like quick little descending little legato thing that's really muted on the recorder. And it ends on this A. And so the notes I could pick up, and it was that. So it's, 
which is going to be seven, pull off the six, pull off the four, and pull and play seven on the D. Like I said, he doesn't play this like this live. He doesn't he doesn't do what's on the recording there live. Um, anyway, so it so it's probably just kind of, kind of off the cuff thing, and then when he went back, he just kind of you know did something halfway similar. So and it's going to end with it back up here in the seventh position. You can play the ninth fret on the G. And then seven, you can do a slight bend on that seven if you want to, over the nine on the D. So we have this. One more time. All right, and then this last little phrase in the solo. So that's going to be a bend, starting with a bend of the 17th fret on the high E string. I then play 17, 14. And then over to this bend the 17th fret on the uh, B string. And then release the bend, pick 17, 15. And then go back into that bend at the 17th fret, and then what you're gonna do is grab the 17th on the high E string and pull off to 14. So I kinda use my pinky for that. And then we're gonna, we're gonna do a series of bends at the 15th, uh, sorry, 17th fret on the B. Oh, back to the 14th fret on the high E, and back to that bend on the B string. Release. And pull off to 15. Over to 16 there on the uh, G string, and then we're going to play 17 on the, the B, and then, and then bend it up with your index finger from the 15th fret. Oh, it's not very comfortable on the So we have this. And that is it for the solo. So now coming out of the solo, of course, you still hear that da -da 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 thing going on that we did in the intro um, going on through a lot of it. But we have this little breakdown section, which does have a, it's really low in the mix as well here too. Um, you basically have uh, Malcolm doing just kind of a B to A thing. And then really buried in the mix underneath that. Wah, da, 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 da. You have actually Angus playing along with that. And what he's playing is here. So that's gonna just, you're sliding up to the ninth fret on the D string, over to seventh on the G, back to the nine on the D. So this repeat that. Now this third and fourth time I'm playing this lick, we're gonna instead of just like doing the single notes there on the G, you're gonna just make them double stops. Because so the anytime you play the seventh fret there, you also add the seventh fret on the B and the ninth. So it just kind of ramps it up a little bit. Um, so that's in the breakdown section, and then we're back to the chorus again. All right, 
right? So it just kind of continues with the chorus until we get to the three minute and 58 second mark in the official video. And there's that, that, it, yeah, it's all right. that kind of part. That's, that's, that's a high vocal line. Anyway, what is going on there? It looks, there's a, so the, the rhythm basically changes here and it looks like this. <laughs> So that's just that B power chord. And then a quick little bass line. Two, four on the low E string. And then into the E chord. So you do that like four times. And then we have the outro chorus. I'm not gonna be doing the outro solos here. I don't generally do outro solos because they kind of just kind of wander in there. Under, they're pretty buried under the mix, the mix with all the actual chorus going on. Uh, so it's the same chorus though. And if you want to improvise, do your kind of things like like Angus is doing in here, which is he's probably going to be just improvising this kind of the outro solo stuff, mostly live as well. Just B minor pentatonic. So I <laughs> So you can just have fun over that outro section instead of me did telling all the solos for you like we did the the main solo just have fun with b minor pentatonic if you don't know b minor pentatonic join the geo 3665 academy i can't even get it out the link is in the description you'll know how to play your pentatonics in any key trust me um that's level one of my improv course all right now and at the very end of the song we're just kind of holding a b5 wow just kind of over that B5, but it's still the same same riff that we did earlier. Just he starts kind of slowing it down as he goes. All right, so that is a beast. Got a lot of tricky stuff going on. Angus's, um, you know, kind of line that he plays alternate pick throughout is very challenging to get up to the tempo. Um, and then uh, Malcolm's got some tricky rhythm guitar parts in there as well. So hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.